So I've got about five very short stories for you. The first one's called Rules of the Road. Specs for this. <clears throat> God damn, I hate Indianapolis. That's bull case, long distance trucker, rendering his opinion on the shithole truck stop he and his buddy Tex had the misfortune to gas up at. Tex was still in La La Land. She had me to stay the night, bull. She made me flapjacks and corn pone for breakfast. Mm -mm. Bull looked down at his scrawny, weather beaten friend and shook his head in disgust. You're a goner, Tex. Well, I don't care if I am. Home cooked meal ain't a thing a man on the road oughtn't to take lightly. Bull snorted, pulling the nozzle from the shank of his 18 wheeler. He aimed it at Tex to emphasize his point. Remember you this, Tex. The road will take you places no woman can. And the road never talks back. <laughs> now saddle up and let's get the hell out of Indiana. The men assume their usual positions in the cab. Bull at the wheel, Tex riding shotgun. Tex fished a used toothpick out of his front pocket and began cleaning the burger out of his teeth. I just might be ready to settle down, Bull. My ass is tired of the road. You'd rather have some woman riding your ass? Ha! You wouldn't last a week. Bull flipped the towel in his can of cheap Indiana corn beer and took a long pull. I don't know, Bull. Miss Jenny's been mighty good to me. You know, she even massages my piles. You ever had your piles massaged, Bull? That is the sickest thing I ever heard in my entire fucking life, Tex. <laughs> I do believe I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> You're right, Bull. Tex nodded. I done changed. I'm a new man. Bull threw on the brakes and the truck lurched into a long ass screech and stop. It was silent in the cab for a good long while. Tex slid the toothpick back into his pocket. Adios, Bull. With the tip of his hat, Tex hopped out of the truck and began walking, thumb thrust open to possibility. Bull turned the ignition, took a swig, and resumed his affair with the road. <laughs> and now for something dark. The black bonnets. Laura Balzer struggled to compose herself in the face of this new reality. I'm a liar. She winced at the word, slapped to her conscience. But if she hadn't lied... Honey, we're out of ketchup! Muldoon yelled up from the kitchen. Check the pantry, love. She had to play it cool. What? I'll get it. Laura scurried downstairs and emerged with his favorite condiment. You're the best. Muldoon, Muldoon glowed at his good fortune. Love you too, she chirped. Muldoon thumped the bottom of the ketchup jar, beaming at his beloved. Laura paused to take it in, then reached for her coat and bonnet. I'm heading out to the salvation meeting. Oh, God, Laura, be careful. I'll be fine, I promise. They hugged extra tight before she slipped out into the night, fastening her bonnet securely. But Laura never returned from the salvation meeting. Muldoon later learned that upon her arrival there, Laura was set upon by a mob of angry men and women in black bonnets, <laughs> that she was charged with deception and wheeled off to prison in a handcart. <laughs> and he knew. Either he had to believe her to be a liar or claim that she was framed. And if she was framed, he'd have to act. Muldoon ch chose to stay home and eat ketchup sandwiches <laughs> until the Salvation people in their black bonnets came for him. <laughs> the Day Spa. Ginger Fox looked nothing like the lively flirt her name implied. <laughs> she clomped through life in a heavy body and looked out at the world through a tired, rumpled visage. She'd never had a date and at age 45 fully expected to go to her grave a virgin. Though the world cared little for Ginger, she cared well for herself. And today she was splurging on a massage at the grand opening of the Bellissima Day Spa. <laughs> right this way, ma'am, said the attendant in crisp whites. I think you'll find everything you need through this door. Odd, thought Ginger. 
The door was painted a playful purple, the only color in a spa that was otherwise unrelentingly white. She opened the door a crack and was instantly sucked into a swirling black void. Though tossed about like so much mixed greens, Ginger felt strangely light and at peace. <laughs> she landed in what appeared to be the Bellissima Day Spa, except that everything, the walls, chairs, curtains, and massage tables, everything was purple. A man in purple robes approached her. He was heavy of body, rumpled of visage, but in a purple parallel universe way that translated hot. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Ginger. I'm Donald Anthrop, and I'll be your lover for this evening. Ginger rose to the occasion like a sunflower. Tell me, she began, about your specials. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation by Raptor. Teresita wept as she crawled on her hands and knees across the parched desert floor. Leaving Flynn was the right thing to do, of course, but she didn't count on him forcing her into his fancy schmancy Lamborghini at gunpoint, driving deep into the Mojave and shoving her into this open air oven. That's the last time I listened to the OK Cupid staff robot, <laughs> she muttered to a passing lizard. She made herself stop crying in the interest of conserving precious bodily fluids. Teresita was nothing if not practical. Eventually, she stopped to scoop out a shallow hole in the earth. Upon reaching the cooler sand below, she curled up in the minimalist shade of a Joshua tree. As evening brought relief from the blistering daylight, she fell into a fitful sleep. Teresita woke to the sound of two vultures copulating vigorously not <laughs> 10 feet from where she lay. Fascinated by their moves, Teresita watched, making mental notes of every thrust and screech, the feral precision of each bite and flap. After their crescendo, she clapped with what little energy remained in her fast draining corpus. <laughs> Emitting a final satisfied sigh, she murmured, Now that, dear Flynn, that is how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, Elmer does the hula. <laughs> Stumbling across the train tracks in a daze, Elmer fought desperately to stay alive. The Dolly Parton wig he'd stuffed into a hole in his left thigh had bled through, creating a color only a young person could love. Elmer feared if he didn't get help soon, he'd never hula again. <laughs> what an idiot, he thought, pushing past his pain. But there was no going back. The entire Texas panhandle was swarming with MPs looking for a tubby middle-aged white man in a grass skirt. <laughs> How was I to know? Elmer wailed at the night. The sergeant had started out all frisky and playful. Then, his meaty hand between Elmer's thighs. The sergeant's shocking discovery. The whole platoon roaring at Sarge's naivete. Sarge going for the pistol in his boot. Elmer's shriek. The beer-stoked, bullet-peppered tussle. Sarge on the sawdust floor, bleeding from between his tight-toned pecs. Elmer escaping through the pantry in the ensuing melee, hitching a freight like a hobo, for goodness sake. Crossing state lines to the relative safety of Oklahoma, and now Elmer alone at the end of the night. But for the first time, not lonely. Energized by the imbroglio, and alive, really. Finally, alive.